This is my charge to everyone. We have to be better. We have to love more, hate less. We got to listen more and talk less. We got to know that this is everybody's responsibility. Welcome back. That was Megan Rapino, who right now is bigger than LeBron, bigger than Brady, <laughs> bigger than just about anyone in the sports world and maybe beyond. Rapino, of course, is the co-captain and star of the U.S. women's national soccer team, which just won the World Cup again. But she's about much more than soccer. Rapino has made news both for her fight for equal pay for women's soccer players and for her refusal to celebrate her team's victory with President Trump at the White House. And we are very happy to have Megan Rapino join us this morning. Ms. Rapino, welcome to Meet the Press. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. Um, so a longtime boxing reporter, who's now a baseball announcer, Charlie Steiner, um, said to me, he viewed you as a modern-day Ali, and here's what Sports Illustrated wrote. There are elements of a modern-day Ali, Muhammad Ali, the, the, the late boxer, in Rapino's commingling of sports and social activism, and say nothing of her ability to turn the media's attention, even when negative, in certain circles, to her advantage. What do you make of the Ali comparisons? Oh, <laughs> that's very flattering. I don't know if I'm, if I'm Ali, but I'm happy to be uh, the biggest ally I can to Ali. What... What opportunity do you see here? I mean, do you see it's like, okay, we got the attention. I am going to make these points. I am going to make these, uh, uh, I am going to make, do this activism. I think the opportunity is in everyone's exhaustion of the fighting and the negative. And our team has managed to make people proud again, to capture people's interest, to make them want to do something. I think people are asking the question, how can we rally around this team? And in that really what the team stands for, whether it's equal pay or racial equality or um, LGBTQ rights. I think we've just managed to give people hope. And with that, now we need to do the next step, which is to, to um, actually take the progress step. Let me go specifics with equal pay. I, 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 I'm sort of surprised here that the corporate communities that support the U.S. Soccer Federation have been so slow to see this, have been so slow to fill the gap. I know Procter & Gamble came out today, and, and they've, yep. they've uh, given, I guess, an additional bonus to every member of the team. Mm -hmm. But I, I understand the way these deals are negotiated, and some of this is the U.S. Soccer Federation. But are you disappointed in the way corporate America's handled this, your sponsors? Yeah, I am. I think that um, we can do a lot more, a lot more quickly. Um, I think that it is a complicated issue, and I think sometimes we get in the weeds about it. Can't see the forest for the trees right. when, you know, big sponsors can just write the check. Um, these are some of the most powerful corporations, not just in sports, but in the world, and have so much weight that they can throw around. Um, and I think that they just need to get comfortable throwing it around. How much of this is you got to grow the game globally, by the way? Because it does seem as if yep. it's the westernized nations who have supported mm -hmm women's sports first yes and that and, and that is perhaps made folks in the corporate community think oh there's not enough people there to market to mm -hmm. no I think that the global aspect is huge um, even just in the last three or four years to see the way that other federations have succeeded um, with their teams on the field they've thrown money behind them and shocker those teams are doing better it's um, good that it was harder this time right no right? right it is exactly. good. I mean you know no no offense to the other teams but it was a little bit harder I and that, that's good for the game exactly it's great for the game and I think it allows us to put so much more pressure on FIFA as well mm -hmm. um, to mandate that these federations have the money to pay their programs and to mandate that FIFA and to push them really to do more you were talking about at the beginning that you see an opportunity here to, to, to preach a message of unity. I think the hardest um, conundrum that a lot of us are in in American politics, whether it's those of us that care about these institutions in this town or other ways, is that how do you preach unity and at the same time um, you don't want to be near President Trump, and I get that. Um, how do you do both? Hmm. I'm, I'm figuring that out <laughs> by the day. Um, I think you inspire people. What do you tell a Trump supporter who loves watching you and I, it's like I wish you'd go to the White House yeah I think that I would you know sh try to share our message do you you know believe that all people are created equal do mm -hmm. you believe that equal pay um, should be mandated do you believe that everyone should have health care do you believe that we should treat everyone with respect I think those are the the basics of what we're talking about and I understand people feel um, upset or uncomfortable. There's, um, I think, some feelings of disrespect about the anthem protest or things that I've said in the past. But ultimately, I think I am here open and honest. I've admitted mistakes. I will continue to do that. I'll continue to be vulnerable and be honest and be open and want to have that conversation because I think Trump's message 
excludes people that look like me and that are me, of course, but it exclu excludes a lot of people in his base as well. And I think that he's trying to divide um, so he can conquer, not unite so we can all conquer. Anything he could do to change your mind about a visit to the White House? There's like 50 policy issues that we can probably <laughs> reverse and uh, get going. Um, I mean, it would, it would take a tremendous amount. I think I'm, I understand that, that progress is sometimes slow and I'll never close any door um, all the way, but I think it would take more than, than Trump is willing to do. What are you going to do next? You want to keep playing? Are you going to get us one more World Cup? And would you at all entertain professionalizing your social activism, perhaps running for office or something else? Um, I do continue to keep playing. Um, I'm, I'm not sure I'm qualified for, for, for office. Um, There's no qualifications but, for office. Yeah, days. yeah, well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Up to 44, I guess there was. Um, you know what? I'm going to fight for equal pay every day for myself, for my team, um, and for every single person out there, man, woman, immigrant, U.S. citizen, person of color, whatever it may be, equal pay, um, as the great Serena Williams said, until I'm in my grave. Tell me what you were, um, were you about 11 or 12 when Brandy Chastain, mm -hmm. you know, and the fate was that moment of, guess what? Girls yeah. can go crazy and celebrate too. Yeah. Um, what do you hope the 12 year old girl, a bunch of them are in the audience today, thinks about 20 years from now in, 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 in remembering you and what you gave to the sport? I hope the same thing I felt. I think in that moment, it was just an incredible explosion of joy. It was so unbridled. Um, so off the cuff. It was just everything that you want from sports. You want just those moments that are totally indescribable. Um, I hope they feel inspired that they can do that, that they can take on more, um, that they're worth every penny and more, um, and that they have fun and with a smile doing it. Well, you have fun. You always have a smile on your face. That is, <laughs> that um, is true. It's been, it's been a great meeting you. You have a, a lot of humility. I have to say that. Megan Rapino. good Thank luck you. to you. Thank you uh, very much. We're rooting for you. Get us another World Cup, too. Yeah, I'm going to get another it? one. I okay. mean, you five one. is better than four. So. Always, always. Exactly. That's right. There's five fingers. Exactly. Exactly. All right. When we come back, as Robert Mueller gets ready to testify in 10 days, what do Americans think about impeachment now? That's next. Hey, NBC News fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and then click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.